All right, everybody, let's talk about Minecraft 1.17, the Caves and Cliffs update, half of that being the cave update that we've been waiting for for such a long time. We'll go into everything that was revealed and confirmed about it, but also I'll try to speculate a little bit as to some of the things that maybe weren't said out loud yesterday. For those of you who missed it on the Minecraft Live event, they did something they've never done before, which is basically lay out the entire roadmap of what's going to be going into the next update, 1.17. So we'll recap that, see if maybe we can figure out some of the implications of what they're doing, and you don't even have to wait until the snapshots to figure out what's being added. Although, of course, it will be nice to get our hands on things as they do development, because they did say the targeted release date is next summer, 2021. So it's a ways out, which means hopefully snapshots will start in the next few months and then carry on until it's actually released. That said, though, let's check it out. We'll start off with the Lush Cave. That's the first new type of cave that they unveiled. It is what it sounds like. It's a thriving green ecosystem underground. Usually seems to have some water flowing through it, which you would expect in a place with lots of greenery. And they confirmed a few new blocks for it. There's glow berries, spore blossoms, drip leaf plants, which actually have a really cool feature we'll get into in just a moment. And what's also really cool is now there's an above ground marker that lets you know that underneath where you're standing, there is a lush cave. So it's not as much just like RNG trying to dig down and being like, well, hopefully I eventually run into what I'm looking for. It's called an azalea tree and it kind of stands out. It has like purple flowers in it. And you know, if you dig right under that azalea tree, you'll end up in a lush cave, which is pretty cool. You don't have to depend too much on RNG anymore. What I don't know actually, and it'll be interesting to find out is with these different cave types, I don't know if they are dependent upon the above ground biome or if they're completely independent. Like, could you have a snow biome that has a lush cave underneath it just as well as you could have a desert biome that has a lush cave underneath? In which case that means you're going to have like these two biome systems working independently of each other, one above ground and one below ground. Again, speculation, but it'll be interesting to find that out if you just have really two different worlds now, which is great, because thank goodness caves are finally seeing some love, dude. I mentioned the drip leaf plant that you can find inside the lush cave, and that actually seemed really cool because they demoed it on the live stream, showing that it can be used as a platformer block, almost, and that if you set it up in a controlled fashion, when you jump on it, the leaf kind of tilts down, and then the next stage is it actually drops out. So you have a short amount of time that you're actually able to stand on it before you have to jump to the next thing. So it could be used to time parkour courses rather than having like pistons kind of sticking out of the walls and then retracting. You could have more free flowing platforms to jump on. Perhaps the most significant thing to the Lush Caves is it seems to be the place where you can find axolotls, which are one of many new mobs, maybe inspired by the Minecraft champs team, the Aqua Axolotls. I don't know, makes a lot more sense now that they're in the game. Anyway, they're a very cute, small little salamander type mob, and you can tame them, it looks like, by capturing them in a bucket, unless there's some other interaction that they didn't reveal on the stream. And then you can transport them wherever you want. And if you have a bunch of them, you can build an axolotl army that follows you around. So they showed a player going into an underwater monument with a bunch of axolotls following them into battle and then absolutely obliterating one of the elder guardians inside of the temple. It was so great. And also they said that when an axolotl takes damage, it plays unalived. And then when it's playing unalived, the mobs won't attack it anymore. And it has a chance to regain health apparently maybe even without you feeding it, and then it can go back into battle. All I want in my life is for you to get like little miniature armors that you can put on your aqua axolotls, and then you can do battle with them, and that would be amazing. I don't foresee that happening, but anyway, it looks great, and I look forward to building an axolotl army. Oh, and I almost forgot to add that the dev who was on talking about him said, there is a chance that the axolotls will be able to heal you under certain circumstances as a player. Another one of the cave biomes they unveiled is called the Dripstone Caves. It looks a little bit similar in aesthetic to today's caves with stone and lava, etc. but it's a lot more expansive in how big its rooms and caverns are. And of course, as per the namesake, you have stalactites and stalagmites coming from the ceiling and the floor, respectively. I studied up on which is which before recording this video so I wouldn't make a dumb mistake. From the stalactites on the ceiling, they're dripping water, so if you put a cauldron underneath, it'll fill that up. 
I don't know if there's a benefit to that as opposed to just using a water bucket or if water is really rare in them despite the fact that they're dripping with water. But I think the coolest feature they sort of hinted at from this is that if you break one of the stalagmites, you can place it down like a spike as if it was from one of those mod packs that has spikes you can put in mob grinders. And it seems like it might be a way to enhance your mob grinders because you or mobs take damage when they fall onto the stalagmites because they're spikes from the ground. So that seems pretty cool. A really easy way to take care of spiders, that's all I'm saying. They also unveiled a cave biome called the Deep Dark. I think this is the one that I'm most excited to check out whenever it's rolled out in the snapshots. If it sounds familiar, it's because there's a mod called the Deep Dark that you might have seen me play in series before. It's very different from this, however. So the Deep Dark, they say, is a biome that you find at the very deepest parts of the world which makes it seem like you can go deeper than before, but we'll get into that closer to the end of the video. That said, in this biome, you can find blocks called skulk growths, and despite the fact that it looks like this weird sort of fungusy looking thing, and the last thing you would expect is for it to have anything to do with redstone, it's gonna allow for wireless redstone and also detecting footsteps in its proximity. This is if I understood it correctly. It seems like if you have vibrations in the vicinity of the block, then it will actually emit a signal that can be done into redstone, or it can propagate out to an adjacent skulk block that can sort of receive that signal that pings from the first one, and then it can ping to another one and another one in whatever direction you have it set up. It doesn't have to be horizontal, and you can create wireless redstone transmission that way. And there's a slight delay between, you know, each one pinging, receiving, and sending the next ping off, just like you would have redstone torch delay and sending redstone up a vertical channel. So I'm really interested to see where this goes. And it seemed like you can actually kind of isolate the direction it's detecting things by surrounding it with blocks so that it's only focusing on footsteps in a particular direction. At least that's what I gathered. But anyway, this will be really interesting to see where it actually goes from a redstone perspective. It'll probably go well beyond my level of comprehension, but it seemed really cool, and it's just, it's like the last thing that I would expect of this fungusy looking plant is it allows for wireless signals, so that's pretty awesome. Also in the deep dark is the most amazingly terrifying new mob called the Warden. You can almost call it a mini boss, actually, because it has a lot of health, and it deals the most damage in a single hit of any mob that's ever been in the game. In the video, the player is wearing full netherite armor, and it deals six hearts with a single hit. However, to balance that out, it can't actually see, which sort of makes sense, right? It's the deep dark. There wouldn't be lights there normally until the player brings it down with torches. So it relies on sound. So if you have snowballs, as is seen in the video, you can throw a snowball and you can create a noise that attracts the ward and brings it away from you so that you can kind of lure it and then sneak away and hopefully it doesn't hear you. It seems like a good opportunity to bring about some kind of like sound dampening boots, maybe made from wool or an attachment. It could be an augment using the smithing table that you can make them have like padded soles. I, anyway, that was not confirmed. That's speculation of me saying that would be kind of cool in another use of the smithing table, perhaps. And it would be a downside because it would like reduce the amount of protection you have on the boots, but also make it so that the warden can't hear you as well. But anyway, if it does hear you and you start punching it, you better hope that you have very good enchantments or that you have lots of things to distract it because it does a lot of damage, but we don't know if it drops anything super cool when you eliminate it because in the video they only showed the player losing to it. So I'm really looking forward to seeing what it does, what it drops, and trying to fight it when it's implemented. Another little detail you might have missed in that is that there are candles as a new block. I don't know how they're crafted, if they spawn naturally in the deep dark in these little areas that you can loot, but Candles, that's a new little thing. The final underground terrain generation feature they revealed are these amethyst geodes, which aren't a biome, they're more like a thing that you can find. They're very rare, apparently, and it's like, you know, you can find a fossil when you're underground, you can find one of these amethyst geodes. It's like this purpley alcove, and inside it you have these crystals, and you can harvest the crystals, which will be used in crafting recipes. The one that they revealed is the telescope. I don't know if it will be used in any others. I assume it will. And so the telescope works like an Optifine zoom, but it's in vanilla. It has more of a, just a circle 
a reticle that you can look through as opposed to the entire screen being zoomed in. Another thing though about these amethyst geodes is that the blocks that the crystals grow on, which make up most of the geode itself, they said you can't actually harvest them. So if you wanna grow these crystals, you have to more or less turn that geode into a farm that you can come back to and keep collecting, which makes me think they'll make the crystals of some sort of value. Maybe they'll be able to trade with villagers or more crafting recipes than just the telescope, but it seems like something you have to revisit. It seemed like even Silk Touch will not let you harvest this. You can't just bring it back to your house. You're gonna have to go back and forth. So once you find one, you might as well sort of mark it off. Beyond the specific cave biomes, they also talked a lot on the stream about improving cave generation in general. So there's large expansive caverns now, there's underground lakes, there's pools of water that you can sort of raft between as transport. You can elytra between different areas of the underground. There's big pillars connecting the floor to the ceiling of the rooms, not the stalagmites and stalactites, but instead more like the basalt pillars that you'd find in the nether. And so all that makes for just like a much more exciting experience. It reminded me a lot actually of the caves that were in SMP Earth. For those of you who caught that series last year on youtube.com slash Captain Sparkles 2 or on Twitch because it was live streamed. So it's just bigger, more grandiose in scale and it allows you to feel like you're actually doing a lot more discovery of new places and it's like, wow, looking around at this awesome environment as opposed to kind of just following narrow little cave patterns. Uh, over and over until maybe you hit a ravine and find something cool in there. So all in all, just a much cooler environment underground. All that said, there's one other underground addition that they revealed that has me excited maybe more than anything else. And that's copper ore. And not because of the blocks and stuff you'll be able to craft in the game, but more so because in mod packs now, we don't need to have copper from 10 different mods that confuse me as to which one I need to have and the crafting recipes in JEI getting all screwed up because of them. We don't need to have copper from Future Craft, from Build Craft, from Thermal Foundation, from Immersive Engineering, from Industrial Bleh. It's just gonna be copper from Vanilla Minecraft and I am so excited and here for it. Of course, the copper will actually have uses in the game beyond just making me happier with mod packs. You can craft it into copper blocks, which look nice for building, but they did actually add an oxidation process. They made it really realistic. So when you place it down, it starts as the golden brown copper color that you're used to, but over time, it moves to more of the bluish green oxidized copper. And so you can sort of tell how long something has been in the world. They didn't say exactly how long the oxidation process takes. And they also didn't say if there will be a way to stop it. I assume maybe there will be so that for those people who actually want their building to stay with that golden brown, there will be a way for them to do it. But we'll see. It's also used for a couple different items, the telescope being one of them, I already mentioned that. And then there's this lightning rod that you can make, which they actually decided to make because Jens was saying how one of the principles of Minecraft is that things that the player can't control don't negatively impact the player. And one of the things that's kind of been an exception to that is lightning hitting players' houses. Well, the player can't control that. And if it burns your house down, it's like, well, I couldn't really do anything about it. And he did say it's one of the reasons he'll never add natural disasters into Minecraft. That's going to stay as a mod. The lightning rod now you can place on the top of your house. And then if lightning does strike in the vicinity, it will go into the lightning rod and it won't do any damage to your house, even if it's made of wood. So kind of a cool way to protect your house if you want to do that. So that's it for the cave related stuff. Let's talk a bit about bundles. Oh, I am so excited for this okay how often does your inventory just get cluttered up with items that there's like one or two and you just don't care about it and you're like can you please stop clogging up my inventory so then you do the thing where you spread out a bunch of whatever you're actually trying to collect across various stacks so that you only pick up those sorts of things especially when you're caving bundles oh they seem to solve this so a bundle is like it's a bag it's still constrained to a stack it can't hold more than 64 items but it can hold multiple items so say you're like in a flower forest collecting flowers and you punch a bunch of them and you have like two to three of each you can put those all into a bundle and it'll stay within the 64 so you can't go over that but it'll only occupy one slot in your inventory and it's so much cleaner that way and you can carry so many more things because they're not all occupying a bunch of different slots with like one or two items in each stack. Oh, it looks absolutely amazing. The one thing that I want to know whether or not it's how it behaves is if you have a certain item in a bundle, 
when you collect more, will it automatically go into that bundle and kind of stack on the item you already have there? Or do you have to add it in every single time? I hope it auto adds until, of course, the bundle fills up to 64 items and then it'll overflow out into your inventory. But until then, I really hope it automatically goes in. And then at that point, oh, that's amazing. Oh, I'm so excited for that. Please make it work that way. Also more on the exploration side, they're adding in these archeology span sites. It's sort of an above ground slash below ground thing. It looks to be something you can stumble across while you're walking on the surface. And then you can kind of go down into it and you can use this new item called a brush in order to brush off the layers of dirt or, or gravel or maybe sand if you're in a desert off of this item. And if you're careful about it, which I assume it's just randomized, you can get the item that's hidden inside of the block. And they showed that it could be a diamond block. It could be this kind of painted artifact. And you can take these painted artifacts and you can assemble them into a cool painted clay pot. They said that the art for the clay pot here is just developer art. It's not finalized yet and they're still working on it. But it's just like this really cool little discovery element. You could find diamond blocks. Or you can have your heart broken when you do the brush on the block and you see the diamond block appearing and then it just breaks and disappears and you're like, well, this sucks. That's a bummer, but it's just a cool little added feature. It almost seems like it's from a mod, but it's, oh, I, I'm looking forward to that, dude. It looks super cool. Going past what's just at face value here, though, what this means, though, is that you are going to have different layers of gravel and dirt and sand, I assume, and these could potentially be used for just really smooth terraforming and really cool builds because in order to have the layers that you're brushing off, it means each of those blocks has to have the different states, just like snow layers. Now there's gravel layers, dirt layers, sand layers, and it just seems like a really cool tool you can use for making nice terrain generation that's very smooth to actually walk up without just being stairs and using other blocks aside from snow. So we started in the caves, made our way to the surface, now we go to the mountains or the cliffs. This is the caves and cliffs update, so that is the other half of it. They didn't spend as much time during Minecraft Live focusing on the cliffs component of the update. What they did reveal is that the mountains are gonna be much more grandiose with more smooth inclines rather than it kind of just being discombobulated features that contribute to mountains and various biomes. And that they're gonna be tall enough that there's gonna be tree lines, so the trees stop and then it goes into just being snow and there's going to be a new mob in the mountains the mountain goat which it can it can jump really high and it looks really cool i don't know what it drops if you unalive it but they headbutt things as well they showed a demo of it headbutting a cow off the side of a cliff poor cow anyway we'll have to see more about them but i assume they're very dexterous climbing up mountains and stuff like that It'd be cool if you could ride one they could just like jump and stuff. But anyway, we'll have to see more about it. I assume there's going to be other things related to mountaintops that they're going to be revealing as time goes by. I don't think they revealed every single thing that's going to go into the update. They've got to leave some stuff for our imagination, right? But that's what they unveiled in the Minecraft live stream. Now, here's my speculation as to what could be the biggest change to come out of this update. They talked a lot about going way down into caves and the deep dark being in the deepest depths of things. But up until now, you really only have like 65 blocks to play around with. And so to get these grandiose features and open caverns and this rafting down layer by layer and having this deep dark that's supposed to be at the bottom without that blending into whatever is on top of it, and then having these really, really tall mountains that stretch way up to the sky, I don't know if they're expanding the world height. They don't necessarily have to actually expand the world height because it doesn't really make use of the 256 block limit. But I am curious if, even if they don't go to 512, are they gonna raise sea level? Maybe raise it to Y level 100 or something like that to give them more room to play around with with the caves while still having a lot of room from 100 to 256. That's probably plenty for their increased mountain size. But I just, in the current terrain generation, non-amplified of course, it just doesn't seem like there's enough space between zero and 65 to do everything they're outlining while adding enough separation to make it feel like you're really exploring into different defined areas within the caves. So I hope this is the case. Minecraft natural terrain generation doesn't make enough use out of the 256 block height limit. And so I hope this means they're raising sea level. And I think that would be awesome. 
I hope it's the case. Pure speculation. I wonder if it means it's going to be weird for like bringing older worlds into the new update. That would be perhaps the reason they wouldn't do it. But it just it seems like it needs it in order to just make things more dramatic and have bigger scale to what they've outlined here. I hope. I hope they find a way to do it. I think it'd be super cool. And I guess we'll just have to wait and find out. So the final thing, of course, I waited until the the end. Um, It's the the mob vote. (laughs) So uh, the mob vote, it didn't go in favor of the Isolager, a.k.a. Chilliger. Uh, I went in favor of the Glow Squid, which is a squid that doesn't glow. Um, I think it, a lot of people were uh, under the misunderstanding that it's a moving light source, which it sadly isn't, uh, and also that it would like hypnotize things, which also uh, was confirmed by one of the developers. It doesn't hypnotize. That was just done for the sake of the video. So um, I will see if many of the people who voted for it were under those assumptions. Uh, but anyway, Chilliger gang for life. Hopefully the Chilliger will be added in the future. But um, what I am going to do is when Minecraft 1.17 releases, I will be making a server uh, which will drop thousands of glow squids into a lava ocean every second, um, and it'll be great. So look forward to that. Anyway, um, this is Chilliger Gang out. Hopefully you've enjoyed, hopefully you found this informative. Make sure to like the video if you enjoyed it. It is, of course, one of our biggest sponsors. Also, subscribe to the channel if you're not already. Stay tuned for more update-related things, snapshots as soon as they start coming out, and uh, hit the bell, even if you are not subscribed and stuff. So that said, um, if you want to watch more, I don't know, update-related things, check out a, check out a video that's related to updates and stuff. Okay, cool. I'll see you next time.